P. Clark here with the 2018 AP Computer Science A FRQ number 4B. So in 4A, I skipped talking about the last three methods because they're for part B. So I'll go back and I'll explain what's going on with these. So has all values, we'll take two arrays, two integer arrays, and return true if every value in R1 appears in R2. So they're going to be guaranteed to have the same length and they're not going to change. So this will, this will work. We don't have to worry about it. It says implementation not shown. So do not worry about uh, figuring out how to do this. It will work. So just use this when we create the is Latin method. Same thing with the next one. Uh, contains duplicates. It will take an array and return true if, it, there are, if there are any duplicates or else false. Again, this one implementation not shown. So we don't have to worry about it. It'll work and we're just going to use it. What we do have to worry about is the is Latin method, which will return true or false after we've given we're given a integer matrix, a 2D array called square, and it'll tell it'll return true if it's Latin or else false. Precondition is that the number of rows and columns are the same, and there's at least one row, and that means there's at least one column too. Okay, skipping down to um, the directions for part part B. It says the right static method is Latin, which returns true if the given two-dimensional array is a Latin square, otherwise false. So what's a Latin square? A Latin square is when it is, the first row has no duplicates, when all values in the first row of the square appear in each row of the square, and all values in the first row of the square appear in each column of the square. So here's some examples. I have one, two, three, and then two, three, one, and three, one, two. The first row, no duplicates, looks good. All values in the first row appear in each row of the square. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, are all in each row. And all values in the first row appear in each column. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm not saying them in order, I'm just saying they have these values. Same thing here, uh, 10, 30, 20, 0, 10, 30, 20, 0, 10, 30, 20, 0, 10, 30, 20, 0. 10, 30, 20, 0, 10, 30, 20, 0, excuse me. Okay, examples that are not Latin squares. So 1, 2, 1, there's duplicates. So I know right away that's not a Latin square. 1, 2, 3, looks good. 1, 2, 3, looks good. 1, 2, what? No, nope. last row does not work. And the columns wouldn't work either, but I just care about the rows for now. Okay, 1, 2 works. 1, 2 works. There's no duplicates. 1, 1, that's not good. So that it has to be 1 and 2 in the first column. So that's why that one does not work. So they're giving me these helper methods I talked about already, contains duplicates and has all values. Duplicates returns true if the given one dimensional array R contains any duplicate values, and otherwise false. The method has all values returns true if every value in R1 appears in R2, and you do not have to write the code for these methods. So again, this is a list of everything I have. Get column, has all values, contains duplicates, is Latin. Then the directions on the next page say complete the is method Latin or uh, complete the method is Latin. Assume get column works. So we should probably use get column as well. So we're going to use all the uh, other three methods to make sure it works or in our solution. Uh, it says right here, you must use get column, you must use has all values, and you must use contains duplicates appropriately. Okay, then this is my method header, which I copied over in my replit on the right. Keep this open because I the main thing are these three bullet points right here. And then maybe just referencing the examples. So first thing I want to see is if the first row contains duplicates. So if I use a method contains duplicates and the row one is going to be square index zero. So if there are any duplicates, that's false. So I just basically took that first bullet point, the first row has no duplicates, and said if there are duplicates in that first row, then it is false. Done with the first bullet point. Second bullet point says all values in the first row appear in each row of the square. So I need to check all the rows after the first row. So I'm starting at index one now because I'm skipping row zero, looping through all 
of the rows. So there's my normal for loop, except I'm starting at one instead of zero because I don't need to worry about one. And I'm going to use some contrapositive right now. So the current row must have all values of the first row. So if it does not, so if it does not have all values, I don't need the parentheses. So if the first row and the current row, bracket I, so what this says is if the current row, square I, has all the values of the first row, if that's not true, if they don't have all of it, then I'll return false. So I know if one row is different, so like this example right here, this one row did not have all the values. So if it's not true, then I return false. Okay, now I do the same thing for the columns, for all the columns now. So I loop through all the columns, including the first column. And looping through the columns, I need a bracket zero dot length to get the um, Going correct to get the number of columns. So bracket zero gives me the number of columns. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a bit, give me some more room that we can see everything. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. If not has all values, I'm still comparing to the first row. But now what goes right here? So the third bullet point says all the values in the first row, so I have that so far, all values in the first row appear in each column. So the trick for this part is that the column, I can't compare a column with a row unless I change it with the get column method. So even if this is wrong, I can use it so I'm saying get the current column of the square, turn it into a normal 1D array, a normal array, compare it with the first row array, and the same logic as before. If it's not true, return false. And then after I'm done with the three checks, so check that first bullet point, second bullet point, third bullet point, one, two, three checks, and if they're all true, that means I got to this spot and I did not return false. That means I have to return true at the end. I'm running out of space to show it all. So I'll get rid of some of this extra space I normally like to use. So there's the is Latin method for 2018 AP Computer Science AFRQ number 4B.